Hello viewers, welcome to my channel ITJ Olympiads and AP Physics with Ambarish. And the problem that I'm going to present to you today, it, it's a really shocking problem. Uh, I mean, it came as a shock to me. It's a very surprising problem. Uh, and the very counterintuitive result uh, you might see if you start thinking about the physics of the problem, it's very counterintuitive. And uh, uh, some students uh, were facing the facing a problem with this, so that's why I decided to analyze this. And uh, I mean, it was uh, it was too much of a shock for me also. So let me straight away get into the problem. So here's the problem. Let me read out. This is Pathfinder uh, Mercury drop on dielectric. So let's uh, read out the problem. Bottom face of a horizontal dielectric slab is coated with a conducting paint. And at the center of the top face is placed a small mercury drop which does not wet the plate. Okay, so uh, this is the bottom face, and uh, this is conducting, and this is small mercury drop over here. Okay, and we have connected a battery. Let's see what's happening. Okay, so the thickness of the slab is okay, uh, small mercury drop which does not wet the plate. So you can assume that is very small mercury drop. Thickness of the slab is d, and relative permittivity is epsilon. Okay. Now the switch is closed and the battery voltage is increased so gradually that the mercury drop spreads on the dielectric slab at a negligible rate. Okay, so uh, we have uh, switched it on and uh, this this is spreading out. Okay, at a negligible rate. At what battery voltage will the mercury drop cover the whole of the upper face of the dielectric? Okay, so we have to find out at what voltage this uh, whole thing will get covered. Surface tension of mercury drop is sigma. And the initial surface area of the drop is negligible as compared to the surface area of the mercury when spread. Okay. And uh, some assumptions I have added uh, which were not mentioned in the question but they are important otherwise we will keep wondering what to do. So uh, when the drop is spreading out there is also something called interfacial tension. The drop is spreading just like uh, on the air li uh, liquid interface we have surface tension. On the mercury and dielectric interface we have got what is known as interfacial tension. And the question should have mentioned the interfacial tension but it's not mentioned so I'm just taking it. Interfacial tension of the mercury with the dielectric is also same as its surface tension and ignore the gravitational potential energy effect. So you can also think that there will be some surface energy associated with the, uh, the dielectric and the mercury surface. Okay. If you want you can give it a try. Uh, I'll get into my analysis. Let's see. So one uh, important concept is that whenever charge is transferred, uh, charge transfer happens across negligible potential difference, there is no heat loss. Okay, uh, just to start doing the problem, I have uh, 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 stated this and later on we'll see that uh, something strange is happening. We'll see what's that strange thing. But uh, this is a fact and this is what I'm going to use while uh, beginning to make the differential equations. Uh, uh, why does that uh, happen like even when the in the capacitor circuit whenever you are charging with the variable battery and you increase the battery voltage very very slowly then there is absolutely no heat loss why because the charges are actually um, moving very very slowly right so that means what there is no kinetic energy change for the uh, electrons and therefore the work done by the battery should exactly cancel the work done by the conservative electric field right and therefore change in potential energy will be exactly equal to the work done by the battery because there is no change in kinetic energy of the electron. So therefore whenever charge transfer is happening across negligible potential difference or you can say whenever charges are moving very very slowly there is no heat loss. So we can conserve the energy or apply work energy theorem uh, without bringing in kinetic energy. So now let us say this drop has spread to some area okay uh, and let us say this has spread to some area A then what we can write see uh, when the drop is spread then effective uh, capacitance uh, is uh, we can assume that the effective capacitance is uh, corresponding to the area of the this conducting drop and the lower plate this is the region where electric field will, will be present we are ignoring the fringing and all those things so uh, this is the area a let us say and this is then effective capacitance okay so then what we can write we can write uh, potential energy of the system as uh, summation of two potential energies. One is the uh, surface, uh, I mean the energy associated with the surface tension and the interfacial tension. What will that be? That will be 2 into surface tension into area. So upper area as well as the lower area. Okay. So this is the surface tension energy and then there is also half CV square. So all of you know capacitance is epsilon not K A by D. So here K is uh, given by the symbol epsilon. So this is the cap capacitance. So half epsilon not epsilon A by D into V square. So this is the potential energy stored in the 
system right and uh, what is the charge at any instant so uh, you know that charge c is uh, q is equal to cv and c is epsilon naught epsilon a by d into v so this is the charge in the system at any instant of time so now let's try to uh, develop a differential equation governing the uh, charge flow and the change in potential energy right so uh, you know that change in potential energy is v dq okay so uh, uh, where v is the instantaneous voltage of the battery and dq is the small amount of charge that is supplied right so what i can write is uh, d du so you just take differential of this what does this become this becomes 2 sigma da and plus uh, this is epsilon naught epsilon uh, by 2d you take common outside and then the derivative of this becomes what this is v square da and plus 2 av dv okay so this is your what this is your du okay lhs is du and this should be equal to v times dq so v comes as it is over here and dq i can find using this again you can take epsilon naught epsilon by d common outside and then it becomes v da plus a dv okay so this is the differential equation which uh, tells you the relationship between the voltage and the area <laughs> and uh, now when you rearrange the terms uh, uh, you will be surprised what what's going to happen if you just rearrange this equation what do you get you get 2 sigma da is equal to half epsilon epsilon v square into da so <laughs> Uh, now, uh, I mean, this this is uh, irritating, right? You have small d over here and there is small d here. What were you expecting? You were expecting that you will get some differential equation between area and voltage and then you will integrate it and you will get some nice relationship between voltage and area. But uh, this is really weird what you have got. You can, if you see, uh, uh, if this equation is to be valid, what's the possibility? Either d a is literally zero on both sides, okay? And the only other possibility is that uh, you cancel off dA on the both sides. If dA is non-zero, you can cancel off dA and then V is 2 root sigma d by epsilon naught E. That means what? We are getting a constant value of uh, voltage and not we, we are not getting voltage as a function of area of spread. So uh, what does this mean? This means that until you give a certain amount of voltage, the drop will not begin to spread at all. And uh, when you achieve a certain threshold voltage, then uh, the drop all of a sudden begins to uh, spread okay and then you can spread at that voltage you can spread it to just about any area whatever area you want uh, uh, maintaining constant voltage it will keep on spreading keep on spreading right so that's what's happening and that's really weird physics some real real weird physics going on here and uh, very counterintuitive uh, actually uh, i mean that's what not uh, you visualize when you start off this problem you don't expect something like this to happen okay but uh, whatever it is uh, so uh, if uh, as we are making the model the same i mean in the same manner we are getting the results so if anything is counterintuitive then we should look for uh, the counterintuitive things in our model itself so why are we getting <laughs> this counterintuitive kind of result by the way, this means that drop does not expand until a certain voltage is achieved and when voltage attains a certain value, it can keep expanding to any area. This is surprising. This seems counterintuitive due to assumptions in the model itself. So, what are the assumptions that we have taken? We have first of first assumption is we have taken that the area of the drop is literally zero. But when you put the drop on the surface, it will have some finite area. Okay. And accordingly, uh, the solution changes, then you no more have a sudden expansion, right? If you take that into uh, uh, account and then we have also effect uh, ignored the effect of gravity and plus the third thing is we have also ignored the effect of fringing we have also ignored the effect of fringing fringing is ignored fringing is ignored okay so all these things we have uh, not considered while making the model and that's why uh, it's okay you can uh, have some satisfaction in your heart that okay no problem i mean uh, these are the assumptions and that's why we are getting this result and this is the final answer that we get now uh, had we known the process uh, a priori suppose we already knew that this is going to happen that uh, voltage keeps on increasing nothing happens and then at certain voltage the drop just begins to spread and it can spread to just about any area had we known that in the beginning itself then we there we could have done this uh, in uh, a single equation also so i'll now i'll tell you the second solution of this problem so what's the second solution alternate approach had we known the sudden spreading fact earlier then i could just write total stored energy is what total stored energy is 2 sigma a in plus half cv square right so total stored energy should be equal to total work done by the battery but then uh, battery sub 
uh, supply is charged at a, uh, I mean, at a constant voltage. Once you achieve the, then all the charges supplied at that voltage itself. So this itself is the work done by the battery. Okay, so QV, and uh, this should be equal to uh, uh, work. Uh, this is, I mean, Q is then uh, C into V, and CV, CV into V becomes CV square, right? And from this single equation itself, if you rearrange, you straight away get the value of voltage, right? So that was the analysis of this problem. And I hope you enjoyed the analysis. If you enjoyed the analysis, uh, in fact, I, I got a bit late for the video because uh, I was in the process of being shocked for a while while solving this. And I was just wondering what happened. So uh, I hope uh, you enjoyed this video. This is a thriller and <laughs> whatever you want to call it, okay, horror thriller. Okay, and uh, if you enjoyed the video, please uh, do give it a thumbs up and please share this video as much as possible uh, with your friends uh, who are preparing for JE through WhatsApp, Discord or uh, Telegram or whatever medium you might be using for networking. And most importantly, if you've not already subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe to my channel because that's what keeps me motivated uh, for doing a new video every day. Thanks a lot for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. And as always, God bless you all. Thank you.